interesting. Let's take a contemporary example. A contemporary example would be all the row over benefits. You know, what is happening about benefits? Are there really benefit scroungers? Are there people who live their lives entirely on benefits? Or might it be true that those who use benefits uh, don't feel very happy about using benefits, would rather not use benefits, would like to get back to work? What is the truth about this? Now, you can't go around with a questionnaire and look for people who are on benefit and say, answer this question, yes or no, or I really strongly agree or I strongly disagree. This tells you nothing. One wants to know how they live their lives, how they manage their lives, what use the benefits are, how the benefits... Are. And so, um, you know, I looked at a recent study which talked about the ways in which those people who were on benefits actually did feel um, that they were um, utterly brought down, brought down is the only word really, by having to use benefits and they wanted not to use benefits but they also distinguished themselves very strongly from people who they described as benefit scroungers so there were as far as these people were there were some benefit scroungers but they weren't themselves uh, they were some other people but of course these other people didn't seem to exist these other people had the psychological point they played the psychological part of relieving those people who were on benefits from any feelings that they might be scroungers provided they could itemize other people who were scroungers in other words they were playing along with the government rhetoric so when the government said oh we've got lots of reports that there are scroungers well all of a sudden this ethnography unpacks that because people say well if there are these scroungers we must be doing something about it you know and good heavens the sun found one scrounger the other day who's been getting all these benefits for all these years but Evidence that there really are all these scroungers tends to be denied by this ethnogra ethnographic research, which shows that people who are receiving benefits itemize, document another group, and we go along to where they say the other group is, and this other group denies that they're scroungers, but refers to some other group. Now, only ethnography can show you something like that. You can't find that out by ticking a questionnaire box or anything like that. See, for many years, I was a criminologist or sociologist of deviance. That was the, almost the name on my forehead. And in that role, I was often asked to come on the television or come on radio and comment about what was going on. And I was particularly concerned with prison and how useful prison was and how prison functioned and alternatives to imprisonment and comparative figures about the tendency of particular societies to imprison this or that proportion of their inhabitants. All very interesting. After years and years of doing this, I was forced to come to the conclusion that everything that I was saying was counted as nothing compared to a couple of headlines in the red tops. So a tabloid headline about what happened when this single prisoner had been let out and recommitted a grievous offence again and the implications the editorials had drawn about this, about the necessity of locking people up and locking more people and banging them up for a... Really, my voice was just was nothing. There are some areas where it's very difficult for social scientists to make any effect because the Home Office, in particular, is driven by public opinion more than evidence and results. Often we know only too well that government policies my son, who used to sort of work in government, used to say we're often talking about policy-based evidence uh, rather than evidence-based policy. In other words, politicians respond to what they see as a public clamour or a public demand and introduce various measures which are not based upon very careful empirical analysis. But you can make differences in smaller ways now. But now... I think a very valuable thing that has happened and which really opens the way for social scientists to have considerably more impact is the development of think tanks. Now it seemed to me in the past that often social science research was too slow. You know, you'd apply for a grant to the ESRC and then after a year and a half you'd perhaps learn that you've got the grant, then you'd have your grant for three years, then after three years you'd produce figures. Think tanks, however, provided a little intermediary. I mean, they worked quickly. And not only did they work quickly, they tended to work to what they believed the government agenda was 
likely to be. So if you're talking in policy terms, something like IPPR, the Institute of Public Policy Research, which is quite close to the Labour government, knew, for example, the Labour government were thinking of doing X, Y and Z. So they could come in and say, we'll do some research for you on that. You know, we will give, in a year's time, we will come back with a report on this particular area that you're interested in, and they'd come back with a report on that area. Now, of course, these places are populated by social scientists. They're in these think tanks. Just, you don't, sociology doesn't have to influence government policy. I mean, plenty of sociology can be done without, as it were, having any of those end effects or those immediate shifts. It doesn't have to have that. It doesn't have to be policy. But if it is going to be policy-oriented, it's got to get closer to government. It's got to get closer to knowing what is up for debate in government because some things are settled they're settled ideologically no point banging on there's no point doing a lengthy survey into the advantages of nationalization and pitching it to the conservative party they're not going to nationalize anything neither the labor party going to renationalize anything and i'm delighted by any campaign on behalf of social science the world's full of unworthy campaigns but here is one which not only allows people to understand much more of what goes on around them so they can affect politics and changes in policy, but it also enables them to comprehend their own lives in a far richer and fuller way than they might otherwise be able to do.